Welcome to Nuggies. In this short video, we'll introduce you to virtual environments and show you how to set them up in Windows. So the problem comes up because Python applications use a lot of different packages. And some of these are included as part of the standard library and they require no additional steps to use. For example, the datetime library. From datetime, import datetime. And then to display the current time, we're just going to use a print statement date time, uh, and I usually use UTC time now, so that way I'm always on UTC time for all my programs. You can see it just displays the current date time we've imported from the date time package, but we did not have to install the date time package. Now, when it comes to running other people's code, there are a lot of packages and conflicts that await you. If we jump over to pypi.org, we can see that there's approaching 400,000 different projects that are hosted on PyPI. And this doesn't include other projects that may be on GitHub or other sources that you can build and install in your Python environment. Each of these packages has its own set of dependencies and version requirements. After installing many of these packages, it can quickly get out of hand. And just to show you that, I have this simple project here that has basically five packages that I've installed. I'm using JupyterLab, Pandas, CV Pro, which is probably outdated at this point, and then the request library and play sounds so you can play sounds. If we just print these out, if we do a uh, pip list, you can see that we're already inside our virtual environment. We'll show you how to do that in a moment. But if we go and we look, all I installed were these five packages, but look at all of the different dependencies and versions that are actually in here. For this reason, we want to use virtual environments. So each of your projects will have different dependencies and it's very easy to run into version conflicts at that point. Let's go ahead and set up our own environment and then we will show you how to control some of the versions of the things you install. First things first, if we look at this project, there is no virtual environment. So you can see down here that we're actually just running my installation of Python 3.9. And we want to use a virtual environment to keep this environment clean. So we're gonna do Python, dash M V E N V V E N V is the virtual environment manager that's built into Python. I always recommend using this because it ships with Python and then you give it a name and I like to name mine dot V N V any folder that this is going to create a folder with this name and the folder that starts with dot is considered a hidden folder. So that's kind of nice because it's not really part of your project. This is it. So this will create our virtual environment. We see the new folder pop up. If you're using Git to manage your repo, you should add the dot VNV to your ignore. So you can see that this is a standard environment name that people tend to use. And you can see other standard names here as well. Inside of this virtual environment, we have an entire copy of Python. And soon we will add our own packages to this version of Python. The first thing we need to do is activate this Python. And if you're on Windows, all you have to do is go .vnv, it's in a scripts folder, and then activate. And if we go in here and we look at this, vnv scripts, and then activate, it's just running this activate script that's going to open up your environment. And that's it. Now we see on PowerShell, which is the terminal I'm using, that we are inside of this virtual environment. And if we do our pip list here, we're just gonna see the things that came standard with this installation of Python. And in order to install our own packages, we're going to want to create a requirements.txt. Requirements.txt is the standard way to define the packages that you'll be using in your project. For this example, we're gonna install JupyterLab and we're gonna install Pandas. Pandas also includes other things like NumPy and Matplotlib is why I like to just use Pandas. And now that we have saved our requirements.txt, we can install all of our required packages in one go using pip install dash r. So we use the option r, and then we'll just give it the requirements.txt file. And this is gonna go through and install all of our dependencies that are required for JupyterLab and Pandas. So we've installed JupyterLab and Pandas. If we do a pip list again, you can see that our number of dependencies has grown dramatically. It wasn't just the two things that we installed, it was all of the dependencies that came along with it. So now you can see as you continue to add external libraries to your projects, you're going to grow the number of dependencies probably exponentially. There is one final concern with this is that we haven't defined what version. So if you leave just the name here and that's it, that means that you can get any version of this. And if we wanted to pin it to a specific version, we can actually go here and see what version of JupyterLab we installed. We can pin this to 3.4.2 just by looking at our list of dependencies we've installed. And then anything you write in here, you'll know that it works with this version. And then we can do the same thing for pandas, which is 1.4.2. If we save this, now the next time you create an environment for this project using requirements.txt, it will be pinned to this version, even if a newer version of JupyterLab or Pandas has come out. 
And something that people like to do is pin it to a version that is at least this new. So that way you can't try to install the older versions. And to do that, you just say greater than or equal to this version. So this will require at least version 3.4.2 and Pandas will now require version uh, 1.4.2. If you need additional information on how to pin these or restrict them in a different fashion, there are additional options that you can set here, but that's outside of the scope of this video. That does it for how to quickly get started with virtual environments in Python. If this helped you, be sure to like the video. And if you want to see more Python nuggies, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.